Real questions, real answers for real life. Come on in and pull up a chair. You're at 1850 Main Street with Michael Del Giorno and David Zanotti. The Atlantic is at it again. Democracy is in trouble, whatever that means. Actually, does anyone know what that means? Well, we've seen the Washington Post opinion piece. That was hilarious. Uh, the AP-generated ABC piece, basically proclaiming that we all agree in America on one thing, democracy's at stake in 2024. That wasn't even the highest testing thing in the, in the survey, as biased as it was. But I mean, nothing tops the Atlantic boogeyman hysteria that we're seeing. And these people are all not just talking to us if we're reading. It's really talking to the networks and giving them their narrative. Oh, the Atlantic, the Atlantic is at it again. We need to rake up poems and songs and comedy routines. But speaking of democracy, it's a bit like nailing jello to a wall. I see orange jello whenever I hear the word democracy. Uh, what the heck is it that they're even talking about? Can they define it? Ask any progressive to define democracy and watch them go, uh, well, you know. Well, they didn't in the ABC A people. Yeah, they have just, a definition for it. Yeah, there's never any. Well, this is not a war of details, is it? <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a very, this is death by a bunch hang, of, hang of dull knife we, cuts. We, we are battling for the soul of the nation. Well, don't sweat the details. It's, 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 the, it's, 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 we it's don't not, have, no, no unborn deal. children don't have souls, no. but a nation uh, does. Yes, uh, never honestly, mind. Uh, so we're, yeah, we are, we have, le logic has left the building. Common sense went with it. And, and we really are in the game of storytelling rhetoric. It's just bizarre. This wasn't just bizarre wording. This was filled with graphic, uh, provocative pictures. In fact, the whole piece starts in big, bold letters. Warning. Yeah, yes. The editor's notes, like skull and crossbones. <laughs> the world is now coming to an end if Donald Trump wins. So the front cover is kind of orange jello color. And, and the headline is, if Trump wins. And then on the front cover, they actually have a table of contents. From page 18 to page 62, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 27. There are 28 articles on what if Donald Trump wins. David Frum on autocracy, Ann Applebun on NATO, McKay Copens on the loyalists, Caitlin Dickerson on immigration, Barton Gelman on the Justice Department, Sophia Gilbert on misogyny, Zoe Schlanger on climate, George Packer on journalism, Sarah Zhang on science, Franklin Foer on corruption, Michael Schumann on China, and it goes on. Oh, extremism. Abortion, disinformation, well, history, partisanship, normalization, civil rights, freedom, military, on the left, on anxiety, and on <laughs> America's character. Well, but, there, but there's your answer, right? What if Trump, fill in the blank, anything that opposes a leftist worldview and policy view? Uh, I mean, somewhere sanity has also vacated the premises. Look, uh, this is a great example, and, a, and I think a, a reminder for everybody, a teachable moment for me. I got to look at this and say, this is exactly what they want us to be doing. The progressive left so desperately wants people who are thoughtful and voters to look at the presidency, only the presidency, and believe that we are choosing between Satan and another form of an angel of light. And that, that, that if you, you, you are literally damning the nation to hell. If you vote for Trump, and by the way, if Trump were not the nominee, all that would change in the magazine is the name. They would do exactly the same thing. That's the power of not being detailed and identifying anything. So you, you can leave the weapon alive for whomever you yeah, want to exactly, point it at. Exactly. So what we, you know, this is so far past the realm of culture war that it's, I mean, it, 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 it actually... You have to laugh at this because this is hysteria on every page. I was trying to think, how, like, how would a newsboy on the street corners in the 1930s be huckstering for people to buy this magazine? No, extra, extra, read all about it. <laughs> hysteria on every page. The world is coming to an end if Donald Trump is elected president of the United States. Democracy, you... Godzilla, climbs yes. up White House. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Here it is. It's all over. All right, number one, if they knew anything 
And I don't believe any longer that they do. I don't believe that the people that wrote these articles have the foggiest idea what the actual construction of the American enterprise is. They don't understand Article 1, Article 2, Article 3, Article 4, 5, 6, and 7 of the United States Constitution. They have no knowledge of it. They have no faith in it. They don't believe in it. They don't care. They believe, according to these articles, that whoever is elected president determines reality on at least 26 different major issues, policies, attitudes. They believe that the president is Godzilla, that he literally will eat whoever the, the presidency has the capacity to eat the nation, destroy it in its totality. Here's a thought. We could actually run this country without a president for a good long time. Boy, they would hate to hear that. Yeah. In fact, we started the country without a president. Uh, our first president didn't want to be president. <laughs> and and he wasn't president until after we had seated the Congress. The, the government actually began. The Constitution was signed. The Constitution was ratified. The a House came together in a set of elections. Before we had a president, we had a Congress. And guess what? If we can't elect a president and it goes to the Electoral College because no candidate can get 270 votes, who picks the president? Well, the House will pick the president. The Senate will pick the vice president. They don't want to hear any of this, but they can't control. You know, I think that's the brilliance of our founding fathers, uh, that every state has the same amount of senators to protect states' rights, but we don't have the same amount of representatives because that's where population is considered. Uh, but you can't control 400 and something congressmen and their smaller districts with access to their people and close to their people, thus control 340 million people. If you can get everyone to believe it's all about the presidency, well, one then vote. you can control the narrative of yep. that one vote. I'll give you an example. Politico did an op-ed piece. No labels is pushing a lie. If you vote independent, if you are independent, all you're going to do is elect Donald Trump. Of course, the boogeyman. So that's to scare anybody that might be considering Robert Kennedy or anybody else for that matter. At the end of the day, though, it doesn't matter whether it's Politico's hysteria, Washington Post hysteria, Atlantic hysteria. I mean, I could go AP, ABC hysteria. The bottom line is they don't respect the individual's right to vet and pick their own president, do they? Now, now first off, these folks are without a doubt, they are categorical elitists. They really do believe that they are smarter than everyone else and they have a platform of moral authority to tell all the rest of us why we're stupid. Now, it doesn't matter who you're voting for, you're stupid. If you're not on the staff of the Atlantic, you're basically stupid. And I, I hope I hope to God that nothing in the communications that we do together in, in any form of, of, whether it's radio or podcasting or print or, or live events, yeah, I know where you're going. that we would never ever come off with that attitude, demeanor, or worldview of elitism. Michael, I would rather be governed by a majority of amateurs <laughs> who are still trying to learn things th th by a majority of amateurs than by a minority of elitists any day of the year. Let me ask you an honest question. Describe to me, in your mind, the average person outside of a head of a cable news network or a print network or a, a far left podcast or website, the average individual who reads the Atlantic, because well, this, that's this latest question. Yeah. That's because the these, this, these latest articles, I don't even think are written for consumers. No, there's a, there's a, we could do an org chart on the progressive left and you could do an org chart on the right as well. They both have their star chambers and their intellectual places where they go to and someone t defines reality for them and then they all pass the message along in a giant game of telephone. Now, let's let's put this in perspective as to how America is run, uh, how we govern ourselves in America right now. You've got 336 million people of whom about 280 million are eligible to vote by age. So you've got a base voting platform base of 280 million, give or take. Now, half of those people do not vote. They're neither registered to vote or they're either not registered or they simply don't participate on any regular basis whatsoever. So 280 divided by two, now we're down to 140 million people. And that makes about sense. That's about where you know, a big, big vote like we had last time was 150 million. Average vote is about 120 to 140 million people voting for a presidential election. That goes back, let me go back 40 years on that. Okay, so those are the people, half of the people participate and they participate less than half of the time. They only vote every two years or every four years. 
So 75% of the people that are in that 140 million are basically people who only vote. They don't do much of anything else. 1% of America leads and 24% pay attention. That's the way it works. So 24%, one out of four people are paying attention. So who is the Atlantic written to? The Atlantic is written to the 1% that leads and to the 24% who pay attention, but it is mostly written to the 1% who lead. And that includes all the college professors across the United States of America, who I will guarantee you in every single class they have an opportunity, they will literally be preaching the gospel from this copy of the Atlantic magazine. There you go. Uh, By the way, I might add, I think, and this is just my guess, and you're the expert on on this particular topic. I'm guessing the Atlantic is giving the marching orders to the Associated Press, let alone ABC, NBC, CBS, without let alone a doubt. professors and university presidents. No this, question whatsoever. Yeah, you're in the epicenter of their thought. Yep. And and now, now here's another thing. Look at this. They're starting right now. They've released their January February edition the week before Christmas. Well, I told you what I was sensing on your morning show, which is normally the week before Christmas, the news cycle ends and everything just goes. That's where you really find out who's a good talk show host. Who can fill time (laughs) when there is nothing? But but they're not. They're on full attack, demonizing Trump, demonizing any third party choice as a wasted vote. They're they're setting all that. They're giving away the playbook of what they plan to play early in the year. So here's my question. Do you think, and I'm I'm, at this, you know, another one of these honest questions, i I've never asked you this question before. Based on what you see right there, do you think that the brains trust of the Atlantic and with coming right off of George Soros's desk and John Podesta's desk, do you think that they are doing this now because they are absolutely convinced there is no chance whatsoever that Donald Trump is not the nominee? They've seen enough polling to know they've got to start the general election right now. Or do you think that they think he may not get it and that this is an attempt on their part to somehow alter the outcome? Well, I don't like to dodge questions, so I'll answer the question. Number one, um, I I believe wholeheartedly they want Trump because right now he's the only energy to their base. I'm convinced of that. Uh, They've got to be concerned that the polls suggest that even if Trump isn't there, whether he legally can't be there or he should lose, first of all, Nikki Haley, Ron DeSantis, and Donald Trump are all handily, if these polls are correct, defeating Joe Biden. So they got a problem with any Republican and Trump would be the one that brings the most energy. I still don't know that if they get what Robert Kennedy presents, which is a real problem. I actually had a different take. I wanted to answer your question. My different take is I think they're giving marching orders now because this is when they know consumers won't be looking. Mm Mm-hmm. And so they can communicate directly to the AP, directly to ABC, NBC, CBS, Washington Post, and only a couple of idiots who don't even know how to ease into the holiday like Michael and David (laughs) would still be watching them. I I actually am suspicious of that because this is like that Time Magazine manifesto. This starts to feel like marching orders. They know they have to have a two-party stranglehold, and they know they need to keep America obsessed and focused on the presidency or they lose control. A moral, self-governed people who are independent in thought and independent in vetting candidates are uncontrollable. You, I mean, I think they are definitely giving away. They fear Robert Kennedy and the third party influence because they're needing a diaper a little bit, noticing, I thought Kennedy would hurt Trump more than Biden, and he doesn't. He actually hurts Biden a point more than Trump. So I think they have a third party phobia and a whether they get him damaged or can they damage him enough to get rid of him. I still think their best play is, and they're usually a step ahead of me and 10 steps ahead of the public. I still think their best play is get Trump and make a switch at the convention. Well, I think that's the drama that they're looking for. I think there's another side to this as well. I firmly believe that they absolutely want the Republican Party as destroyed as possible, no matter who the nominee is. And so this is also cannon fodder for that disunion among the Republicans, because Republicans are not the majority party. Neither party is. Independents are the majority voting party in this country. Non-aligned people make up more votes than anybody else. When you get to the critical swing states, it's huge. Like a state like Ohio, 
there are twice as many independents as there are Democrats and Republicans combined. When you subscribe to 1850 Main Street, you're the first to find out what's happening next with new guests, publications, and events. And when you spread the word about 1850 Main Street, you're helping others find real answers to the real questions facing America right now. To learn more, visit 1850MainStreet.com. And please, tell a friend. If they were to see, let me give you the scenario first. It is possible with Robert. I mean, Robert Kennedy's polling at 20% now. First of all, he won't even be on the scene until we get to the general election debates. Ross Perot wasn't on the scene until the debates. They would have to put him on the debate stage with both of them. That's when 20 can turn into 30, 32%. Then they got a real problem, let alone if Kennedy's smart enough to target states that split their delegates. He can make it so no one can get to 270. And they know if that happens. And if in this modern time, the American people watch the United States House of Representatives select the next president, and it may not be any of them potentially, uh, or not what they would think they would, and then the Senate pick the vice president, and then the two, presumably one might be Republican and the other Democrat, govern in a way that brings prosperity and security. What does that do to their ultimate stranglehold, the two-party system, as well as the obsession on the presidency. I mean, that's the curtain. If Toto pulls it, you see the little man pulling the knobs instead of the great wizard of Oz. Would they, this is the question, would they protect their stranglehold? Was that like the world's longest windup on a question we've yet had on 1850 Main Street? It could be, but it had to be because, you know, how else can I revisit something? But let me ask you, would they punt on who the next president is to protect that two-party stranglehold. In other words, in real time, are they having to juggle what they're doing at all costs? Which leads me to my next question. You can't, you didn't answer mine. And my question is this, is this entire process purely a hysterical act because they want everyone so focused on the presidency that they can completely dominate the House and Senate elections because they really don't care that much? Or how about this? What if the whole thing goes to the house and by the time it gets to the house, they're in control of the house? That's exact. That isn't that their ultimate security. And you say, well, nobody thinks that far. Are you kidding me? They're always 10 steps ahead. They're (laughs) always 10 steps ahead. And plus they have billions of dollars in their spare change drawer. They have so much money that there's no amount of money that that can stop them. They They have more money than the market will bear when it comes to politics in their networks. And so this is a very serious, this is a blood sport for them. This is a very serious game. So they want everyone's eyes on the presidency while they can carry out their mischief in the House and the Senate. There's no doubt about that. You know what would be a fun timeline to do right now? Where do you think we sit at the end of this year versus where might we be sitting by the end of next year? Well, As we sit here this year, I mean, if I had to go through the scenarios, and I mean, I I would literally just simply say, as far as 2024 goes, it might as well be a Pandora's box. And I don't know what's going to jump out. Anything could possibly go. But I mean, think ahead to this time next year. Will we, who will be the president elect this time next year? Will we even, (laughs) will we even know? Along that line, let's look again at this magazine and look at the 26 articles on all the places where the end of the world is coming um, and if Donald Trump's reelected. This is the perfect analysis on why they want to start in 2024 another summer of good trouble, why they want to get all of the militants realigned back on the payroll, lined up in a perspective so that if Donald Trump wins, there is such a popular resistance that he can't take office. I want to ask you right now, if Donald Trump wins and they stormed the Capitol, the progressive left stormed the Capitol, while Joe Biden is still president of the United States, what do you think would happen? Do you think if Donald Trump wins, they will basically put the military up all over? Oh, yes, teacher, teacher, he's got his hand up. What, 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 what? All right, so I have to do this one, and I'm going to try to do it without laughing. All right, so (laughs) we had the president of the United States coming out of his campaign headquarters in Delaware, the sitting 
living president of the United States. As he's walking to his SUV, the reporters are screaming at him. You're getting killed in the polls. Why do you think the president is beating you in the polls? And then he yells something to the effect of, well, what polls are you reading? And as he says that, you hear a loud crash. That loud crash is a 46-year-old drunk driver, a black drunk driving male who plows right into the Secret Service SUV, then tries to make an escape where he is, with guns drawn, stopped by Secret Service, all right? So think about how the president was in danger. This I, We don't know anything about this guy, what his motives. Was he trying to kill the president? Was he in road rage? Did he not like that they were blocking the road? We don't know anything. And I wait to learn more about him. The next morning, I can't find a single story about this man anywhere. Nobody's curious as to why he was running into the motorcade. I have to go all the way to London to the Daily Mail to find out it's a black 46-year-old drunk male released in 35 minutes with no bail. He's on the street. And he was drunk and almost killed the president and ran into one of the presidential motorcade vehicles. Can you imagine if that turned out to be someone else? That that one individual put more people in harm than anybody on January well, 6th. Let me ask you a question, Michael. And I hadn't thought about this till now. We're just talking about this. What, what on earth? How could, first off, any vehicle get that close to the presidential motorcade? And what if that had been a terrorist with a bomb oh, in that car? Was he a trial run of that? We don't know. No, and, and nobody's even curious. That's what's scary. I mean, I'm almost offended for Joe Biden. Yeah. Don't you love your president and honor your president enough to know how did a drunk driver get that close to him? And who That's is this crazy. guy? I don't, care, I, I don't care who the president is. This can't happen. That cannot <laughs> happen. What is going on here? Okay. But to your point, what would happen to him? He walked in about 35 minutes with no bail after doing that. How's everybody faring that was just at a protest on January 6th? So, and then the other thing is, is this the initial outline article that will be used all year long to train up the militant forces should, it doesn't matter whether it's Trump or Republican or if it's or if it's Bobby Kennedy, should Joe Biden not be reelected? Is this their game plan to start their militant resistance to keeping the next president from being seated altogether? It worked last time. Why wouldn't it work this time? Well, this is this is this is where we're so they have not changed strategies at all. No, and and last time in the in the Time Magazine manifesto, uh, they were basically planning an insurrection, and they and they even Without explained to you how they had to call off the yep. insurrection when they yep. shockingly won. Uh, but what they planned to do was, and everything they told you they did, they weren't proud of. I mean, the whole thing was written in this tone. Correct me if you think I'm being too loose with paraphrasing, but it was all written kind of like this. Hey, look, is this the right, the greatest thing in the world to do or the right thing to do? Maybe not, but we had to do what we had to do to save democracy. Democracy was at stake. Exactly. So we weaponized this. The shadow uh, we harvested campaign votes to, to save, save the de democracy. They, they didn't even do it in the light of day. They were telling you from the beginning it was done in the shadows. It was dishonest. Well, they didn't even, yeah, because they didn't tell you till after it was over. Right. And they basically said, we had to do this. What is this warning article saying? Democracy's at stake. The boogeyman the could get elected. The whole world anything, is coming to an end. Exactly. Yeah, anything goes. We got to do whatever we yeah, got to exactly. do to stop this. Anything goes well, the, now. The last time the blank check, but, but you're one of the only people in America, and you know me, we're friends. I, I don't have to puff you up, but you're the only one. And I didn't even... I say this before Almighty God, I, I was so focused on what they did because I'm more of a feely guy, all right? So I'm thinking these people, it's beyond a political strategy or a political tactic. They really believe this crazy stuff. They really, they don't even know what democracy is, this great democracy orange mush god, but boy, <laughs> they, wor but boy they worship it. And they really believed it was, I mean, that guy was writing sincerely. I, I was watching all the operatives and all the, the, the grass tops and grassroots movements. They didn't get what was at stake. So I got involved and with a panel of people and that, that panel became the actual president's cabinet. But anyway, with this panel, here's what we did. And we controlled the media narrative. And then we silenced any opposition through technocracy and social media. Mm -hmm. And then we harvested votes and we weaponized COVID to change election laws. Hey, we did what we had to do in darkness to save democracy. But now we're telling you what we did. Well, they're going to do it again. Here it you, is. Were one of the, you were one of the few that caught. Their real plan was they thought it still wouldn't work. And they planned it on an insurrection yeah. to keep him from ever taking office. So here's 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 the question. And this is where we differ. 
not you and I, but where this conversation is different. At this stage in the game, people could say, okay, you guys kind of sound like the bottom line on all this is, so God knows you better vote for Trump. No, no, <laughs> no, 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 don't, 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 don't jump to that conclusion. Anyone who overhears this conversation, don't jump to that conclusion. Because the answer is, we've got to be delivered from our addiction to the presidency because we're being manipulated like this every single election. If we spent 90% of our time worrying about who gets elected to Congress and spending our money funding good people to go into Congress, these kind of articles would be even more laughable than they are. Let me take it one step further. I don't have to worry about Mark Green. Uh, to my neighbors, a little bit south and east of me, they probably don't have to worry about Scott Desjardins, but that's what our focus should be. Yeah. protecting our United States Congress. And quite frankly, congressmen who have it on the line in areas that could go either way, that may be where my prayers need to fly. That may be where my money needs yep. to fly. That yep. may be where I need to fly and go knock on some doors. My focus is not, if you ask me about the presidency right now, and by the way, if this is offensive to you, there's something wrong with you, not me. I don't have to make up my mind yet, and I have not made up my mind Well, I yet. want you to know I take and, offense at that, just so you would know. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> And if, and by the way, if I did have to make up my mind today, which would be ridiculous to have to do it You'd this early. You'd be voting for Jack's relative. His nephew. At least get the family tree right. Okay. I might be leaning as much towards him as I am Donald Trump. And I don't even know. I think we all got to wait and see if it is Donald Trump. Uh, and if it is Robert Kennedy or if it is Joe Biden. But, you know, but yeah, your focus should be because you're right. The biggest play would be, you know, I always feel like they always have something up their sleeve. Their first goal is to just win it. And they win only it with Joe show Biden. you what they want you to see. That's important. Right. So they want us to see this orange jello mush god you're talking about. Yeah, they want article. to control yeah. the presidency. They want to control the narrative. They want to. All right. So they want this democracy mush god. If they can win it with Biden, great. If they can't, they'll make a switch at the convention, probably to Gavin Newsom. And if you're already stuck with Trump, that might get really interesting. Their next scenario would be to have something else up their sleeve and that something else up their sleeve could be switching the bottom of the ticket. It could be riots in the streets. It could be another wave of COVID. I mean, I think any card they've played in the past, they will play in this game of bluff we call 2024. The conversations are just getting started. To get connected, check out 1850mainstreet.com. We don't data mine anyone or sell your information. Subscribe today so you don't miss a single conversation. We'll see you next time here at 1850 Main Street.